Hey, this is Jim. Um, today I went down to Osaka to see my friend Matthew. Um, and uh, I'm doing this voiceover because as I'm shooting this video, my finger is covering the microphone. So the, uh, the audio didn't come out very well. Uh, basically, we had a very nice conversation. I haven't seen Matthew in a, a few years since we moved down here. He, uh, he came down to visit some family and friends, and uh, so we hooked up near Osaka Castle for just um, at a local coffee shop. And we basically had a nice conversation about his experiences with the Japanese healthcare system uh, as he's experiencing it going through his cancer treatments and uh, thought you might like to hear it. So I'm really interested in your experiences with the Japanese, the Japanese healthcare system because I know when I came here first um, I was very surprised that just how good the care was and I know you're obviously you know, battling cancer you go into a lot of hospitals you're in a lot of you know clinical situations um, what have your experiences been? Um, well, generally very, very good. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a big decision to come here because when I was diagnosed with terminal cancer, I was, I was in the UK. Um, and um, in the UK, healthcare is completely free. In Japan, it's, you know, it's a hybrid system. Japanese health insurance that pays for like 70% of the cost. Um, yeah, so I was I was worried about the language barrier, I guess, is one thing. <clears throat> but what I found is um, all the senior doctors here, at least the ones I've met, speak really good English. Really? Um, I was... I was kind of worried about, um, I'd, I'd heard this thing from Japanese friends that there wasn't uh, much culture of getting like second opinion here. I heard that but too. But that seems to have changed, I don't know if it's changed massively in the last few years or whatever. Um, but second opinion is now like a really big, really, really big thing in Japanese healthcare. Um, yeah. in, in that there's actually a different fee system for it. So like when you go to um, when you go to a hospital where you're not a registered patient there, <coughs> um, to get a second opinion there's like a slightly higher fee. Um, so it's like it's like an actual yeah. thing. It's become part of their of their culture. Um, now, can you get these second opinions yourself, or do you have to be recommended? I mean, that, that's the amazing thing about Japan healthcare is basically you can you can go to any hospital you want. Yeah. Your yeah, I mean, often they'll say they want they're meant to have a letter of introduction from a doctor. Mm -hmm. Although that could be any it could literally be any doctor. If you don't have a letter of introduction, there's no issue it's okay. at all. Really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, often in Japan things are like more flexible than they appear. So yeah, I guess the best way to explain Japanese healthcare is that um, I think that <clears throat> they're very influenced by hotels. Hotels? <clears throat> yeah. So um, actually, when I was kind of looking at, at different hospitals or whatever, um, choosing one to, initi to just initially go to. Um, I noticed quite a few of them had they'd written on the website like we, you know, we have um, senior staff who were hotel consultants or whatever. So you know, Japanese hospitals model themselves on basically a good quality hotel. Um, so a lot of the hospitals in Tokyo that have the staff training done by the people from the big hotel really? chains. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a big thing, and it, and it feels like that. You know, you're. Um, well, I know from my own experience that. You, you feel very well taken care of and you really do feel very safe in these places. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're treated as a guest, you're yeah. treated as a customer to a large mm. community, even use the Japanese word get summer is, is like the word for customer, right? Um, so, you know, like you, you like if, if, if you walk, if you walk in and get seen straight away, they'll still say I'm sorry to keep you waiting, even if like there's no way. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just been wonderful. It's really, um, really, really got. <laughs> I came over here. Now you're you're obviously seeing highly specialized oncologists and you know people in this field. Yeah. So. 
How's your experience has been with, from a technical perspective? You know, you've had a lot of scans, a lot of x-rays, you've had yeah. a lot of blood workup. You're, you're in the hands, you, these people are working with you very, very closely. Um, you, are you developing relationships with these people? Are you, are yeah, you getting close that, to them? That, yeah, that's a really interesting point. Is, um, yeah, for example, the, the immunotherapy clinic, I go there every week. <laughs> you know, so I sit down and spend half an hour talking to the immunotherapist every single week. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, you know, and I've been doing that for eight months now. So yeah, it's just really interesting. Like now there are these Japanese people who I know, even though you're in a medical situation, it's like I know them better than a lot. You know, I see them more likely than most right. of my Japanese friends. Um, and in, you know, even though our talk is kind of focused on medical stuff, um, like, like I did notice when, when I first met the um, <coughs> the oncologist, so the guy that's doing my chemotherapy, um, when I when I told him I'd been reading a lot of stuff on the internet, he was kind of skeptical about that. But very very quickly, when he realised that you know I I read a lot of medical papers. Um, I've read papers written by the doctors who are treating me, you know, like with the, with the immunotherapist, I've read a lot of his work and he's published several hundred medical papers because it's a very, very long career. You know, I, I, again, I don't know if my experience is, um, is maybe atypical because even though, you know, I, <clears throat> my knowledge of human biology is pretty bad, my knowledge of medicine is non-existent. I've read a lot of stuff about my situation, right. so I'm able to talk to the doctors a lot about like how clinical trials have you know developed and how they run, for example. And and I found that they share a lot of my concerns when you when you read a paper and it looks really promising and then you read you know it was 25 patients, five of whom pulled out of the trial. Right. <laughs> And you think this is this is not something you want to make a good. You know, a, it's not a basis for a sound decision. Um, so yeah, it's, it's I, I don't don't want to say that my my experience is, is very typical, but so far everything's been basically perfect. It's like, like I meet the doctors and I think like this is someone who I I would really like to be friends with out of, out of the medical setting as well. Really? This is just these are just amazing people. I mean that. So that just makes the experience here so much better. Yeah. That you know, you always feel you're getting the attention you need, and it's you don't have these way the game of scheduling. You know, if if I see the um, the oncologist and he wants me to see another specialist in the hospital, I'm going to see them on the same day. <laughs> there's, there's no. Yeah. There's just I, no problem. I had a, a similar situation, but it was strange because. I walked into the hospital, I checked in, you know, at the front, mm. I scanned my card, and each place I had to go to in the hospital knew me as I would enter. They would have my yep. data, yep. even in that particular office, whether it was the blood section or the x-ray section or whatever. Now, I haven't been to the U.S. in a long time. I haven't been to the U.S. hospital in a long time. I don't know what, the, I can't comment yep. on that. I just don't know. But I thought it was really cool that I walked into mm. this certain you know specialist section of the yeah. hospital and they knew me okay they had my data yeah i'd walk across the hall they knew me i didn't have to bring forms around you know it was kind of interesting um very efficient yeah. and very low-key it was just yeah. sort of as a matter of fact it was yeah. almost as if this is normal and for me it was not normal it was very yeah, I mean, abnormal one, one thing in japan is that at least by western standards we say everything is overstyled and like when you when you're exactly, sick, exactly. you exactly exactly everything over stuff exactly a nurses. right I know you want you know you, you there's yeah. a lot of human labor here in these situations but it it seems to be sort of implemented with a level of efficiency that I've never seen in the West yeah you know yeah. And, but, um, you know people have a very a very clear role and they're very confident about it. Right. And like you say, the, the result of that is everything's quite low key. Right. So they're like, they're just, the people are there as you need them. So, um, 
So really, a really good example of this would be in, like you mentioned, the hospital for cards. You know that in in my wallet I have a bunch of cards for different hospitals. So when you go to the hospital, they make the card, and then you put the card in. So for me, I put the card in the machine, and it prints out my schedule for. Yep, the exactly. <laughs> but. In the background, there are all these staff ready to help anyone who has a problem with the machine. They come right over. They come. They, they come right they over. They swoop in. I know. And that, and that ties back into this thing of, of you know, they've the, the 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 hospitals here have learned a lot from the service industries. That's the kind of the hotel thing, yeah. right? Just as in the restaurants here, the staff are there before you call them. They're, they, they're watching the customers, they anticipate when they're needed. Yeah. So like you're struggling with the machine, thinking, oh, I should go and get a member of staff. The member of staff comes before you go, yeah. you know, before you go to my mom. And that kind of thing happens again and again and again here. They've thought a lot about the flow of the people, I think. like thing, Things feel very smooth here. I think the, uh, that can only come from analysing like how would a person move through a hospital. You know, with, with, with a cancer patient, might on a typical day so you have to see several different people and spend time in several different departments. They they clearly analyse that and worked out how to make that as smooth as possible. Um, which is, you know, when you're when you're sick, that's what you want. You want. Yeah, you do. Every little thing should be right. Any any way to minimise the stress, minimise the kind of the upset. Um, so very very careful about that. <clears throat> Another thing that I've I've really learned to appreciate here is um, the the doctors here are, are really obsessed with side effects. Um, they want to minimise every side effect not just life-threatening ones, which is you know, particularly important with chemotherapy because um, I, I, you know, I don't like chemotherapy, but I was, I was dreading it. Yeah. I was dreading it. Because I, have, I have a very low vomit threshold, which just means like, very easy for me to, for me to, for me to like, be sick. And then when I'm sick, I like, I'm repeatedly sick, right? And, um, you know, I've, I've never vomited from the chemotherapy. Really? Okay. And you're having some high-end chemotherapy. It's, it's brutal. It's, yeah, it's, you're it's, having... It's brutal, but um, they're just very, very, very good at, um, you know, they know there are these side effects and here are these various drugs that can deal with these side effects and one of one of the drugs I had for dealing with the side effects itself had a side effect had another drug to do with that and it's very 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 careful again like um, the when the oncologist was talking to me about side effects he then went and got the pharmacologist so it, you know getting like the the top expert in the hospital medicine yeah. is then coming and talking through you're going to get these drugs and this is this sort of thing. and it's it's so re reassuring but also just it's very nice to have the the treatment without the terrible side effects because you know I was, I was dreading that.